All right, so today we're going to talk about our chapter 7 vocabulary, still in forces and energy. This one's going to be focused on magnetism and really how they're working, what things are magnetic, and what things aren't, and why. Our first word that we're going to talk about is magnet. Uh, so our definition is any material that attracts iron and materials that contain iron. And for our sake, that's as specific as we need to get. Uh, our example being, if an object attracts iron and a few other metals, okay, so iron's the primary one, but there's definitely a few other metals, it is a magnet. And that's the general example and definition that we'll have. And here we got a very classic U-shaped magnet for our picture here um, that you may have seen, or kind of that horseshoe magnet um, that you'll see a lot of the times. Our next word we're going to talk about is magnetism. So magnetism is the attraction or repulsion of magnetic materials. So our example is unlike poles attract, like poles repel. So you know, if you've ever played with magnets, if you put uh, the north side and the south side, which we'll talk about, <clears throat> you know, the N and the S together, they're going to attach. If they're the same, then they're going to push away. Also, magnetism will apply to non-magnetic materials. What I mean by that is you could have a metal, like say a bar of iron, that's not going to attract the iron next to it. However, if you have something that is magnetic, then it will attract it. And that's also that property of magnetism. So it doesn't have to be just between two magnets. You just need one thing that's magnetic to have that property of magnetism. Our next word is going to be magnetic pole. So our definition is it's the ends of a magnetic object where the magnetic force is strongest. Our example being, there is a north and a south pole on all magnets. Also, this is just like the Earth, right? We have a north pole and we have a south pole. It's no coincidence that magnets have the same thing. The Earth is really a giant magnet. It's actually the largest magnet because, well, it's the size of the Earth. That doesn't mean it's the strongest magnet, but it's also the reason why when you make a compass, it points north. It generates a magnetic field. And that's what we can see on the, the image I have over here. We have a north side and we have a south side in this image. And we can see there's these lines traveling basically from one end to another in these big arcing um, kind of half circles. Those are what we call magnetic field lines. And basically what this is happening is we have this traveling path of magnetism and that's why when we have a compass it'll point north and not south. Um, <clears throat> and which is really helpful well, when traveling. And also, because we have this magnetic field, it also helps all of our other magnets kind of act as well. So all magnets are going to have a north and a south side, just like our Earth. Our final word is going to be magnetic force. So our definition is a force produced when magnetic poles interact. So our example is magnets produce an invisible force. They can do work on objects, causing them to move. Remember, if an object does work on something, it causes it to move. And so if we have a force, that can happen. Because a force is really, um, you know, ultimately has the energy that allows something to move. And so it's an invisible force, right? We can't see it. Uh, it almost is like magic, right? You can't see where these magnetic fields are traveling, but they absolutely have an effect, right? They can cause something to attract. So if we have magnets that are of opposite poles looking at each other, uh, facing each other, they will attract to each other and kind of stick and they have to take a little effort to pull them apart, right? It takes force to pull them apart. There's a magnetic force holding them together. We have to override that force to pull them apart. Repulsion is that same thing except the opposite direction, so they push away. And now this is actually how a lot of times like those bullet trains will work. Uh, they have these really, really strong magnets on the bottom and they repel the train on top. This creates a very small amount of friction, which is partly how these trains are able to go so quickly with not a whole lot of effort, actually. And then the other one is rotation. You can kind of get things to spin. Uh, we can actually make electric motors work like this, where these things keep changing, and as it keeps spinning, it keeps getting pushed, and keeps getting pushed, and it constantly creates the cycling 
Um, that's how a lot of electronic motors work, and I, we can kind of look at that in class a little bit as well. All right, that finishes our four words for our chapter seven on forces and energy, specifically on magnetism. Thanks for watching.